Hello, I'm Louise and I'm currently 50. Menopausal symptoms started for me about three years ago. What I mean by symptoms, noticeable symptoms, would be waking up at night as if I had been doing a marathon in a tropical rainforest. I mean, hot beyond belief. It was a GP friend of mine said, oh, actually, do you know what? This could be the sort of onset of menopause. Have you thought about that? And I was taken aback because I thought, well, you know, I'm 47. I didn't imagine in my complete ignorance that that would happen to me at that age. I thought I might be sort of 55 or something. So slippy. Here, I think what's upsetting about it for me is that I don't feel all the time like myself. I sometimes feel like this kind of anxious, worried, and sometimes quite low version of myself. And that is not the person that I used to be. Um, am normally. I'm just much more anxious about things that I would never normally be anxious about and then get cross about things that, that really five years ago or when I'm it, when things are working well I don't care about. Can you be in charge because you're much better at doing the, fr the frying of the pancakes than I am. Yeah. I make it too thick don't I? Yeah you do. <laughs> it's kind of these swings of mood that I'm not accustomed to I think one of my daughters put it really well, that I just don't feel myself. I don't feel quite myself. There's something, you know, I'm just like a bit uncomfortable in my own skin. I was quite young when mum obviously started going through menopause. I didn't really understand what, like, what it was and what happened and how it affected her. But now I definitely understand it. And I know that it's really a horrible thing for mum to go through. And that everything that she does like to help it with her exercise, like, and I can encourage that. And it's not just like, oh, Mum's going off to do another one. Like, it's her therapy, really, and I think it's a good thing that I know what she's going through. You know, it's absolutely delicious. I did go on HRT and I had a system that worked really well. So that was brilliant, but then for different medical reasons, I had to come off that system and I've tried another system which doesn't work, for me at least. And this is what, what I've realised. It's all so personal, you know. And I've been trying to do herbal, go down the herbal route. Um, and there was a brief period over sort of Christmas time when I wasn't on anything at all and I realised then that actually my symptoms were quite, you know, were, were affecting me quite debilitating. To get some answers, I've come to see a consultant gynaecologist who's the leading specialist in this area and works at Queen Charlotte's and is based at Westminster Hospital in London. This is Mitch Hatton. Hello Louise, how nice to meet you. Please have Thank a seat. You. Thank you very much. I think the key to being successful with hormone replacement is individualising. No two women are the same. HRT and breast cancer, there were concerns about that, but what would you say? So the concerns about breast cancer are genuine in the sense that there was a link with hormone replacement therapy. Uh, this came from studies that looked at older types of hormone therapy preparations. Um, many of which we don't actually routinely recommend for our patients now. And using more modern types of hormone therapies, uh, the increased risk seems to be mitigated within the first five years of use. And if there is an increased risk beyond that, it's no more than one extra case per thousand women per year. So just a few thoughts really. I feel really reassured after talking to Nick None of us are alone in this. Um, there really is help out there. And I kind of think, you know, it's about time we really try to smash through this taboo. There is no need for any of us to suffer in silence. So I feel much better. Hiya. Hiya. <laughs> Thank you.